Welcome to season two of Grim History. Buckle up for the beginning of our road trip through the Southeast. We will be starting where we left off in our home state of South Carolina. Our first stop is Fort Sumter, built upon a man-made island. This historical base was meant to prevent future British invasions in South Carolina after the War of 1812, but it ended up being the birthplace of America's first civil war. This is the dark history of Fort Sumter. Named after a general of the Revolutionary War, General Thomas Sumter, Fort Sumter was built on an artificial island in a water channel that gave Charleston natural shelter. Fort Sumter was meant to dominate the harbor, reinforcing the protection provided by surrounding forts such as Fort Moultrie, Fort Wagner, and Fort Gregg. The island was originally a sandbar, and construction of the island began in 1829. The fort was meant to be the strongest in the world with its five-sided shape, 190-foot walls, and 135 guns. By the 1830s, the exterior was completed, but the interior still needed to be built. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected the President of the United States. South Carolina, fearing that Lincoln would free their slaves, seceded from the Union on December 24, 1860. On December 26, 1860, U.S. Army Major Robert Anderson abandoned Fort Moultrie, destroying its large guns, burning carriages, and taking its smaller cannon with him. He secretly moved companies to Fort Sumter. He thought that providing a stronger defense would delay an attack by the South Carolina militia. While still under Union control, Lincoln's attempts to resupply and reinforce Anderson's company at Fort Sumter were repulsed. On January 9, 1861, the first shots of the war were fired by cadets from the Citadel, preventing the steamer, Star of the West, from reaching Fort Sumter. After realizing that Anderson's troops would run out of food by April 15, 1861, Lincoln ordered ships under the command of Gustavus V. Fox into Charleston Harbor to provide supplies to Fort Sumter. On Friday, April 12, 1861, at 4.30 a.m., Confederate batteries opened fire on the fort and continued firing for 34 straight hours. There was no return fire for more than two hours. The fort lacked the ammunition as well as fuses for their explosive shells. Only iron balls could be used against the attacking Confederates. On Saturday, April 13th, the fort was surrendered and evacuated. Although there were no deaths during the battle, two Union soldiers died during the evacuation after a pile of black powder cartridges ignited during the 100-gun salute, signaling their surrender. The Union tried to retake Charleston Harbor on April 7, 1863, when Admiral Samuel Francis Dupont, commander of the South Atlantic Blockading Squadron, led frigate New Ironsides in an attack on the harbor's defenses. The attack was unsuccessful. The Union's best ship, USS New Ironsides, never effectively engaged, and the ironclads fired only 150 rounds while receiving 2,000 from the Confederate soldiers in the fort. The Confederates, in the meantime, were strengthening Fort Sumter. A workforce of 500 enslaved Africans, under the supervision of Confederate Army engineers, strengthened it with sandbags. Fort Sumter's heaviest guns were mounted at the fort's highest level, where they had a wide range of fire and could fire down on approaching ships. After the defeat, both Major General Quincy A. Gilmore and Admiral John A. Dalgreen were now commanding the South Atlantic Blockading Squadron, determined to make a boat assault on Fort Sumter for the night of September 8th and 9th, 1863 but this would also end in failure. Dalgreen refused to place his soldiers and Marines under the command of an army officer, so two ships set out towards Fort Sumter that night. 
the army flotilla was stuck off Morris Island by the low tide. By the time they were free, the Navy assault had already been defeated and the army returned to shore. The Navy's assault involved 400 sailors and Marines in 25 boats. The operation was a fiasco from beginning to end. Poor planning and communication was blamed on the mission's failure. Commander Thomas H. Stevens Jr., commanding the TIPSCO, was placed in charge of the assault, while Commander Stevens protested that he knew nothing of organization. The Confederates fired upon the landing party. The men in the boats that had not landed fired muskets and revolvers blindly at the fort, endangering the landing party more than the garrison. The landing party took shelter in shell holes in the walls of the fort. As the attack continued on the fort, Fort Johnson and Confederate warship CSS Chikora opened fire upon the boats and landing party. A number of the boats withdrew under fire and the landing party surrendered. The Union casualties were 8 killed, 19 wounded, and 105 captured. The Confederates did not suffer any casualties in the assault. After the unsuccessful assault, the bombardment proceeded with a varying degree of intensity, doing more damage to Fort Sumter until the end of the war. The garrison continued to suffer casualties. The Confederates continued to salvage guns and supplies from the ruins and harass the Union on Morris Island with sharpshooters. Charleston Harbor stayed completely in Confederate hands for almost the entire four-year duration of the war. After pounding Sumter to rubble with artillery fire, a final operation was conducted to occupy it, but was repulsed and no further attempts were made. The Confederates evacuated Fort Sumter and Charleston in February 1865 as Union Major General William T. Sherman outflanked the city in the Carolinas campaign. On April 14, 1865, four years to the day after lowering the Fort Sumter flag and surrender, Robert Anderson, by then Major General, and although ill and in retired status, returned to the ruined fort to raise the flag he had lowered in 1861. Today, Fort Sumter is a national park and a learning center for those interested in the fort's past. South Carolina was the birthplace of many things, Blackbeard's infamy and even the Lizard Man. But nothing will top its infamous fall in 1861 and the fort that started it all. Fort Sumter was the birthplace of the Civil War and the start of so many paths to freedom. Thank you everyone for tuning in to our season two premiere of Grim History. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we will see you in our next one.